this tutorial we're going to have a go at constructing the typical structure of a whare nui. So I particularly had a look at Te Whare Runanga at Waitangi to see the structure and this is the kind of thing we're going to draw. In this tutorial I'm going to be using the keyboard shortcuts rather than the menu. If you don't want to use the keyboard shortcuts you can select the tools from over here on the left but I will be using these which are a bit quicker. So first of all you're going to open a new document and we're going to begin by drawing the floor, the slab and the popo which are the wall supports. So I'm choosing the rectangle tool, R, and sketching out a rectangle, and I'm just going to type in 6 metres, 12 metres for the dimension. You see them appearing down there. Enter, P for push, and I'm going to go up 0.5 metres. Now, as soon as I make something, I need to group it by selecting it all or triple clicking on it, right click and make a group. This makes it editable later. It also stops things from getting embedded and stuck together. Now I'm going to move on to those popo. So they're rectangular shaped as well. So I'm just going to draw a little rectangle there and I'm going to type in 400 millimeters comma by 200 millimeters. Okay, I'm going to zoom in now and P for push pull and I'm going to extrude that up two meters. Enter. Now once again as soon as I've made something I need to group it. Right click make a group. Right, now I'm going to create this pattern of popo. Oh, but first I'm going to notch out a place for the heke to rest on later. So I'm zooming right in. I want to edit this, so I have to click into the group, double click. Take my rectangle tool, and I'm just going to draw a little notch. Now, P for push, and I'm going to take that through, point at the back, and it will take that out exactly. And now I can close the group up again. So there is my first popo. Now I'm going to make an array. I want to repeat that along the side. So I'm selecting M for the move tool, and then control to make a copy. Click, and I drag it exactly to the end. Now, before I do anything else, I'm hitting divided by 15. See that down here? And enter. And it's made 15 of them. And once again, I'm going to select that whole thing, right click, and make a group. Now that I've done one side, I want that exact same thing over the other side. So I select M for move, control for making a copy, and drag it across. So my next step is to make the potoko manua, the support poles here, the columns, and the tahuhu, which is the ridge pole or spine. Okay. So I'm going to choose C for circle, and I'll just find the middle here. And I want this to have a radius of 100 millimeters, which I've typed in here. Enter. Now just zoom in. P for push pull. And I want to go up 4.5 meters. Enter. And once again, group it. Make a group. Now I can copy out two more of these. So select M for move and control for it to make copies. So I'll just go straight back to about there and 
another one about um, there. So I've got my front column and my two Porto Gumanua heart posts. Now I want to make the tahuhu, the ridge pole that goes along the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it on the floor and then lift it up. That's just sometimes easier to get the size and shape right. So I go there, P for push pull. So I'm just shaping it like that, maybe a bit shorter, that will do. Once again, I make a group and that's going to make it easier to lift. So there we go. I just pop it straight up there and I can give it a bit of a jiggle to get the position exactly right. So my next step is to make the heke, the rafters or ribs, and the kaho, the purlins. So once again, I think I'm going to draw them lying down flat and then I'll move them into position. So I'll kind of zoom in here and I'm using the rectangle tool and I'm just making my first rafter and paper push pull. I'm just going to pull it up a wee bit. There we go. And I want to make sure it's sticking a reasonable amount. Oops. There we go. Okay, now what I want to do is rotate it down so it's sitting perfectly in that slot. So I'm using Q for rotate. I can use the arrow keys to get the protractor on the right plane. I want that green one. So I'm rotating it from there, click to the end, oops, you know what, I forgot to group it, that's why, that's why we group things. Okay, Q, and now it moves as a whole thing. Okay, and just have it sitting down there, and I've got it slightly in the wrong position. So I can just move it along, M for move, there we go. Now I'm just going to use the scale tool to get the size exactly right. Actually, I'll just finish, no, that's good. So if I hit S for scale, or you could even think of it as S for stretch, I can give it a wee jiggle around to get it fitting just really nicely. Okay, so I've got my first heke or rafter made and now I'm going to copy it along so that I've got the same number as Popo. Right, so remember what I do is I select M for move Oops. and M for move, control for copy, and I move it along till it's exactly at the end, hit divided by 15, down there, enter, and I have my perfect number of rafters. Now what I should do is group them all. So select all of them, right click, make a group. Now that's going to allow me to copy that group, M for move, C for copy. S for scale, 
and I can pull it through and fit it to the other side. And it's just going to take a wee bit of jiggling to get it fitting exactly right. Okay, so I've done my jiggling and got my hickey fitting well on both sides. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to draw the purlins. And I think I'm just going to draw one on the ground and then lift it up again. So half a rectangle. And I'm just going to draw a pretty skinny rectangle there using P for push-pull. Purlins are quite skinny. So I push it into quite a skinny style. And don't forget to group it. Make a group. And now what I'm going to do is just move this up to where I want it to be on my first thing here. And I'm also going to rotate it so that it sits nicely on top. Now you can use the pattern tools again, move and copy, to get the purlins repeating down the hickey. Okay, so now we're going to draw the back wall and the front wall. So I'm around the back and I'm just going to draw a rectangle for beginning the wall down here. So click and want it to be quite thin. P for push, pull, and I'm just going to bring it up to there. Now, I'm going to fill in the peaked bit by dragging up the middle. So I'm choosing L for line tool, going to the midpoint and drawing a little line. There we go. Now I can select that line. Oops, there it is there. And M for move. And I'm just going to drag that line straight up. M for move. Drag the line straight up until it fills in. And I'm just going to make the back wall a little thinner. And so I can position it so it's exactly in the right place. Now I'm just going to make a group, obviously. And then I'm going to copy that back wall to the front position. So using move and control for copy. And I'm just going to drag it straight forward. until it's in position. Now I want to leave some room on the front porch for the maho. Next thing, whoops, I need to break into the group, so double click so I can edit it, and I'm just going to pop in the door and the window by drawing on it and pushing through. Okay, so that's my front door and my window, and this is the Maho, the front porch. The next things to draw are the Amo, the uprights, the Maihi, the arms, the Tiko Tiko, the Kururu, the Pai Pai, and the Pare. So how about you have a go? and see if you can draw those things in yourself with what we've learnt. Ka kite.